About 10 years ago, I always spent Christmas in the hot weather like summer. My father worked as a general secretary of the education board in the Korean Methodist Church for a long time. After that, he was invited to serve as a Korean worship service pastor for the Kona United Methodist Church in Hawaii and a counselor committee member for a period of five years before his retirement. At that time, I was studying at the Boston and Princeton area in the eastern of the United States. So I went to Kona in Hawaii to meet my parents on Christmas season. As you know, the weather of Hawaii is always summer. However, in case of Boston, due to the huge piled snow in winter, sometimes the front door was not opened. But in case of Hawaii, as well as it doesn't snow in, on Christmas Day, I remember that. Santa Claus dressed in short sleeves clothes delivered Christmas present by riding a canoe. And Hawaiian dancers were lay, saying, Mele Kali Kimaka. It means Merry Christmas in Hawaiian. At first, they looked awkward and unfamiliar, but I got used to it more and more. I realized that Christmas is not coming only for the cold winter, but also any time and anywhere is Emmanuel. So if there are villains of Bethlehem and the baby Jesus Christ manger in our heart, the joy and gratitude of Christmas come to us in every day and every situation. At this very moment, I hope all of you believe the fact Christ the Messiah is our savior and he is always with us. Today's scripture, Philippians, is the most significant and meaningful among the epistles of St. Paul because he wrote it in the last imprisoned Roman prison. Paul's very hard life came to an end as a martyrdom in this Roman prison. Therefore, Philippians is important in that Paul wrote to Philippians at the end of his life before his death. In this letter, Paul wrote his testimony of his living as a Christian, which is the message of verse 13. But this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. Paul defined his testimony an exemplary Christian attitude as to forget what is behind. What is shown in Paul is the attitude of faith that doesn't remember disappointment. Paul spent 15 years of evangelism and suffered all kinds of hardships, but the result was jail time. It was only disappointment to him. Nevertheless, to assert that he forgets what is behind is that he doesn't remember disappointment. Paul was also disappointed, disappointed in human relationships. Peter didn't treat Paul honestly. His co-worker Demas abandoned Paul. And one of the early church leaders named Alexander did a great deal of harm to Paul. The churches was built by Paul didn't develop peacefully. In almost all the churches, there was the heretical power that harassed Paul. And the Corinthian church hurt Paul due to the constant internal disputes. It was also disappointment. But Paul said that he did not remember the disappointment from human beings or the church. In fact, our life is also a continuation of disappointment. We are disappointed in our business or our job. Sometimes we are disappointed in our health, friend, and family. But Paul says that 
those who believe in God don't remember disappointment. How can you forget this disappointment? Paul's answer about this question is written in the verse 14. Toward the goal to win the prize, when you don't remember disappointment and dissatisfaction, it can be transformed into God's greater rewards. The book of Job speaks well of this truth. Job's disappointment came to the climax. The unhappiness of his home gave him disappointment. Loss of property has added disappointment. He was disappointed in his own health. His wife left the job, and his friends harassed him. Because of the reason, he was disappointed. His wife and friends attacked Job like this. You absolutely have to be disappointed to God. But Job didn't remember all his failures, misfortunes, and the disappointment from his wife and friend. And he didn't leave God until the end. At last, because of his faith, he was blessed a lot and it was turned into God's reward. Therefore, the time when it comes to be disappointed is the most important forked road. Like Paul, when you look at the image of God laid in front of us and move forward without remembering disappointment, we will receive God's amazing grace. Life is like a runner. Even while we are asleep, the wheel of time lets us run unceasingly toward the end of our lives. The book of Hebrews of the New Testament is telling a few precautions toward our running life. The first is to throw away our heavy loads. This is the common sense of a runner. If there is a marathon runner carrying camping tools, food, umbrellas, coats, boots on his backpack, it would be a laughing stock. The reason why the marathoners don't like that is that they know the fact there is a point of arrival a few kilometers behind. However, despite some differences, because of the reason, we don't know the exact arrival time of our life. We are running with a heavy roads on our shoulders. After all, many of us fall down due to our own loss. Another precaution for life's long journey is that we should take away the sin that entangles us. Disputes consequently tie up by itself to everyone who thinks they are defeated or they win. Hate is a scary spider web that ties you and me together. Arrogance causes us to fall down and selfishness makes us get bogged down deeper. So Jesus speaks affectionately toward our life. Come to me, all you who are weary and burned, and I will give you rest. Finally, the precaution about our life journey is to run with patience and endurance. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. We must look at only Jesus, the founder and the consummator of faith, and move forward. Paul said in today's scripture text that those who believe in God need forgetting what is behind, not to remember disappointment. It means to discard something to brag about. That's what we think qualifies. Paul wrote a few words about something to brag about himself through Philippians chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tri tribe of Benjamin, 
a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to all, a Pharisee, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Paul was the student of the great, greatest rabbi Gamaliel and had Roman citizenship. In addition, there were many things to boast physically. But now, Paul has forgotten all that boast. Through the verse 8, For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish. Paul forgot what was behind and moved forward. He didn't remember any disappointment or a complaint behind that. He gave up something to brag about himself or his qualification and moved on. Where did he move forward with forgetting all these things? Paul called it a new goal. Being a Christian is to have a new goal. It means because it's a precious goal, we should forget the boast as well as the disappointment behind. Forty years after leaving Egypt, the Israelites took their first steps in Canaan, the land of promise, and named the place where they first pitched camp Gilgar. Gilgar means rolling in Hebrew. It means that they roll or suffering and disappointment in Egypt and failures and sins in the wilderness and don't remember all of them. And now that they have come to the new land, so start again with a new motivation, new face, and new goal. We need Giga too. Paul wrote his disappointment, his qualifications, and something to brag about. When we don't remember disappointment, God's ability and power can come to us. And when we forget our qualification and something to brag about, God's grace can pour down. Therefore, Christians who are doing faithful racing toward the kingdom of heaven should long for a glori glorious reward that will never rot and perish in the kingdom of heaven. The Apostle Paul longed for this glorious crown for righteousness so that in the tribulation and persecution, he could fight a good fight, keep his faith, and move forward. Frankly speaking, I myself felt very shame while I was preparing for today's sermon. Sometimes I am disappointed too that when the storm of the disappointment came to me, I often used to hide my face into wings like a chicken. I repent of my lacking faith and hope to have a good faith like Paul. When the train goes into the tunnel, we can't get off, even though we are afraid of the darkness. If we sit quietly, the bright world comes out again. Waiting is a relaxed mind. I hope we don't need to get upset or disappointed in only one thing. I'd rather have a broad mind that there are other ways. When one door closes, another door opens. Not only the errors of the Apostle Paul, but also today. All the Christians on this earth are faced before all the challenges that obstruct the faith. In this situation, the scripture text gives us an important message. Please think of everything in the Lord and act in the Lord. What if God was us now? Only those who have such a faithful attitude can live a victorious life in a constantly challenging world. Anyone who finds that the Lord is the only truth will never be misled by first truth and will not abandon his faith. We believe that in this world, only the Lord is worthy of receiving honor and glory. 
because of his love, Jesus was suffered the hardship for us and died on the cross. When you realize this fact, we can be willing to walk the path of suffering for the Lord. And we can go toward the triumphant life by looking at the new goal given to us by the Lord. In this Advent season waiting for Christmas, I hope and pray that all of you will be thankful for the grace and love that God gives to you all the time through the life of faith. Amen. <laughs>